In this video, we at Graham Engineering Corporation are going to show you the key features of our American Kuna extruders. Each segment of the video will focus on a specific portion of the machine, as listed below. Feel free to scroll on the timeline to specific segments as desired. Segment 1. Motor and Gearbox Hi, I'm Gary Sai, Regional Sales Manager for Graham Engineering, owners of American Kuna and Wellex Brands. I'm here today to show you the cutaway machine. It's a two and a half inch, 24 to one, air-cooled American Kuna extruder. Very simple, conventional machine. The cutaway allows us to take an inside look of what makes our machines unique and set us apart from some of our competitors. Starting back at the, the, the motor and power transmission, we can either offer this in a belted configuration like you see here, or it can be direct coupled. Belting it is more common because it allows us to more easily change screw speed, increase torque if a material requires that. The gearbox on the machine, it's a Coleman gearbox. Coleman is one of the world's largest suppliers of gearboxes for single screw extruders. Uh, the box incorporates uh, AGMA grade 12 gears, hardened and ground. Gears are rated from one to 13, 13 being the best. These are almost aircraft-grade gears. The bearings in the box, we'll start back at the thrust bearing. This is the most important bearing in the machine itself. Uh, it sees all of the load that's being forced against it by the screw. It's a tapered roller bearing, which means that if you were to take out one of the single bearings and you were to roll that on a floor, it would turn in a circle. A lot of boxes from com uh, on competitive machines, they use a conical roller bearing, so if you were to take that bearing and roll it on a flat surface, it would continue to go straight. These bearings won't wear as fast as a conical roller bearing. Uh, they're better made. Um, it's, for, it's more suited for the application itself. The thrust bearing is supported between two radial bearings. That ensures that when load is applied to the quill or thrust shaft, that the deflection is minimized, which enhances the life of that bearing. Many competitive machines have the thrust bearing either mounted out front, cantilevered out front, or cantilevered off in the back of the machine. And that, when it's mounted in that manner, that shaft, the deflection on that shaft is greater, which impacts the life of that bearing. This is a superior design. The walls of the box are, are very heavy. These are almost three inches thick. It's a single piece housing as well. Um, being cast iron of this thickness ensures that the box is very rigid, dissipates heat well, and absorbs noise. These boxes are very quiet. The plumbing uh, that you see here allows for the operator or maintenance personnel to easily change the oil on the box so that when changing the oil, you're not getting oil all over the machine or on the floor of the plant. Segment two. Safety, hopper, and feed. We have an e-stop here located on the top of the box. That's required by law, close to the feed section. In case anybody had the hopper off the machine, they'd be very, it'd be very easy to hit that e-stop in case they got their hand pinched or something inside the machine. The hopper will have a sight glass, a dump chute, and a slide gate shutoff. The hopper is made of stainless steel it can come in a square configuration like you see here. We also offer round hoppers and hoppers of a variety of different sizes depending on the application or requirement. The feed section machine, all American Kuna extruder feed sections are water cooled. Our feed sections are unique since we ensure that you get flow through the entire feed section. Competitive machines will also just have an open cavity so your supply and return water, just that it never fully flows throughout the feed section. We actually separate the halves and we bore across the face of the feed section, which you can see this hole here, ensuring that any of the supply water is forced through this flow passage to the return water. That keeps the heat, any of the heat generated by the forward barrel from migrating back into the feed section heating up the material in the hopper, possibly causing a bridge with that material, or migrating the heat back to the gearbox and overheating the gearbox, jeopardizing the life in the bearings. 
We offer the feed section with an optional liner, a replaceable liner. Um, that would allow you to change that liner out in the event that there's any wear or you needed to change the geometry of that feed section to enhance feeding of certain materials. Segment three, barrel heating and cooling system. We get down further, the forward section of the extruder. This machine is configured with four zones. Again, it's a 24 to one L over D machine. Uh, we use deep well thermocouples that are positioned in the center of each zone. We get as close to the barrel wall as possible without jeopardizing the strength of that barrel. All of the heater coolers are bolted halves. The ID of the heater cooler itself is machined precisely to the OD of the barrel, ensuring good intimate fit. Uh, the heaters themselves have insulators on the top of the electrical connections. These are ceramic in this case, but we also use Teflon uh, tape or sleeves as well. But this part of the screw is really where the rubber meets the road. This is the transition section on the screw. If we can see what's happening here, it gives us a better idea on how we might need to tailor the design or recut the screw. This machine has cast deep fin cast aluminum heater coolers. It's capable of up to 650 degrees Fahrenheit. We also offer machines with cast bronze heater coolers capable of 900 degrees Fahrenheit. The shrouds on the heater coolers are cast shrouds. That ensures a good intimate fit between the heater cooler itself and the shroud. That prevents any leakage that might occur or could occur if, if you're using sheet metal shrouds like some of the competitive machines that are out there. The blowers on the machine are located at the base of the shrouds. When the blower is activated, the air from the blower comes up and around the heater cooler itself forced out the top of the heater cooler and then out through vents on the barrel cover. Segment four, barrel support and extruder base. The barrel support, which you see here, it's a very rigid support. Uh, the barrel itself is supported by four set screws around the barrel. Each of the set screws are tipped with brass and it allows the barrel to expand without galling the barrel. The base of the extruder, you can see all the weldments are full weldments. We don't use stitch welds. The lifting eyes and leveling pads aren't tabs that are just welded onto the machine. It's actually a channel that spans the full width of the machine. The machine incorporates fork pockets that allows you to move the machine into place without damaging the base of the machine. I think American Kuna is the only machine that I've ever seen that are offered with fork pockets. They're small, simple details that help set us apart. Segment five, spare parts and warranty. The machine comes with a full complement of spare parts. This machine includes a barrel heater, clamp heaters, thermocouple, swing bolt for the clamp, a brass nut for the clamp, a breaker plate, and a rupture disc. There are other parts that we offer as well with the machine depending on what the customer's needs are. The machine comes with a full three-year warranty. These spare parts are also covered under that same warranty. Segment six, clamp versatility and die support. The single bolt clamp assembly, it can also be configured with a bolted discharge flange. The single bolt clamp allows the operator to change any of the downstream, the head or the die very quickly and very easily. Also access the breaker plate and screens very quickly. Simply undoes the brass nut, swings that single bolt clamp out of the way. The lower half lowers or drops down. He can rotate the clamp itself so that when he's purging the machine, none of the purge material will collect in the lower half of the clamp. Put that back together, lower the top half, raise the bottom, tighten that up. You tighten that with a wrench. This machine also has a die support or head support on it. It can be configured with two head supports so that the operator, while one is running, he can set up the other head and get it prepped for the next product. He can actually preheat that if he wanted, so he minimizes any downtime between changeover. Segment seven, 
Control Panel and Controls. The control panel on the machine, in this case, is mounted on the base of the machine. That makes for a nice, complete package. So if they're going to move the machine, the control panel is always there. It, it allows installation to be that much quicker. There's no inner wiring between a remote panel and the machine itself. On the front or downstream side of the control panel, we've got your power receptacles for any of the heat zones. We also have your circuit breakers and your thermocouple receptacles. Depending on the size of the head or the die on the machine and the number of zones, heat zones that it might have, would impact the quantity that is here. We're not fixed to just two or four downstream heat zones. We've had machines with up to 40 heat zones on them. This machine incorporates a touchscreen. We offer touchscreen control or discrete control. And those discrete controls can be mounted on a T-panel that would be positioned on the discharge end of the panel, or what we would call overhung L, that would overhang the barrel of the machine. It just depends on the process and how the extruder is configured. I hope this has given you some insight to some of the unique features that American Kuna extruders have, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. For more information, please visit our website or contact us via email at sales at americancuna.com.